So the next position that we're going to talk about after you've gotten your stance down and you've turned, pulled your shoulders back, is the drop phase. And so this is the phase of the swing where the racket goes down into our set position here where we're getting ready to start into the forward swing. And so the drop part of the swing is where the top of the racket goes downward. It kind of is a drop. Notice I'm not pulling the racket back. I'm not going wild. I want to keep my arms as if there was a box drawn straight out from my chest. I want to keep my elbows and my arms in the box. If I take my elbows out of the box, that's okay. If I you say, hey, I see a lot of guys on tour, their elbows up like this, it's out of that box. That's fine, but if you watch further, you'll notice that when they get into their drop position, their elbow is back inside the box. And so I want to keep my elbow in front of me and in that box as my racket is being dropped downward. That's going to help set our swing plane. It's also going to coil my forearm. So as you do this, you want to feel a coil and a twist in your forearm. What that is, is as we swing, you're going to feel the hand turn over. And we'll talk about that a little bit further as the palm starts up, then the palm is down. And that movement, as many of you know from our serve, is what we call pronation. So many of you are concerned with getting pronation in your serve, but you've probably not really thought about or been told to get pronation into your forehand. That's an extra force that's going to help bring the racket forward to give us more spin and more pace. So we want to load our forearm up by turning the top of the racket down or letting it drop. I don't want to swing backward. I don't want to take the racket real wild. I don't want to just set it straight down. I want to keep my arms in front and for right-handed players out to the right, for left-handed players to the left, but I want to keep my hands out here, that's going to help me drop the racket down. And as I do this, you're also going to notice my right side. So before we talked about in the shoulder turn video, how my weight gets stacked on my toe, my knee, and my nose. Now, as I turn, my, I'm going to start to get a little bend in my hip. It's very important. So many people will bend their knees like this. We don't want to just do a squat. We want to bend in our hip, and as you notice, when I bend in my hip, my knee goes outward just a little bit. So I want to go straight down. I don't want to bend over this way. I don't want to be leaning. I just want to drop my weight. So when I drop my right side, notice my shoulders and my spine begin to tilt. I begin to get an angle with my spine. That is also going to help set an upward swing plane. If I bend both knees, my spine stays straight and I'm not setting a swing plane for my shoulders. So my shoulder plane stays very flat. And that's what happens to so many of you. You say, well, I bend my knees. Or maybe you bend your front knee. Now your shoulder plane is downward. And you say, I have all kinds of problems, you know, hitting the ball over the net. Well, maybe your shoulder plane is down. We need to hit the ball up. So if I bend my right side as I drop, so my right shoulder and my racket drop together, it sets an upward shoulder plane, and that's going to help you get the ball over the net. 